another edition of House to Home, the show that brings you investment opportunities right at your doorstep. Home ownership has become fashionable with so many other people out there who are greedy, out to corn you, selling ghost houses and of course idle land. But right here on House to Home, we do a thorough background check and bring you only the most credible companies. I am your host PK10 and let's have a look at some of this week's highlights. On Prime Properties today, we feature AMG Realtors, a company anchored on delivering the best possible service and value through provision of land and property through a seamless process with utmost integrity. We speak to the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Andrew Mothe, on the success story. Get professional advice on what to look for before making that bold move of buying land. And we also give you professional advice on home ownership. This is house to home welcome on prime properties today we talk to andrew mother Gitao of amg realtors now in this property market it's very hard for you to find somebody who's putting his name on the line that is because he is credible enough with 15 years of experience let's find out his story which is one that is definitely going to inspire you so amg property uh, amg realtors was born out of a need to really offer people genuine investment opportunity. This was as a result of a personal frustration where, you know, when you have a little saving and you want to buy a piece of land, it's difficult to ascertain whether that land is genuine, whether the title is genuine, whether the land that you're being shown, whether the, the location is a real location, and whether where you're putting your money then is safe. So um, because of that frustration, I decided to start a company to be able to offer people exactly what I was looking for. Genuine land, land that has title, land that is in the right location, and land where if you are shown this is the land, this is exactly the, the, the point. So AMG is actually the initials of my name, and I what, what I said is I'm putting my name on the line so that I can be able to offer people the right kind of investment. <music> We've been in business for five years now. We just celebrated our fifth year anniversary, uh, which was quite exciting, and we were giving away, um, uh, we gave away a Mercedes uh, to be won in a competition. Uh, uh, a customer of ours, Emily, won, and uh, we also gave out uh, a lot of pieces of land in that promotion just to celebrate our five years, which was quite exciting. <music> Land buying, um, there are two types of uh, uh, land that you can buy. You can buy lease uh, hold or you can buy freehold land. Uh, today I'll specifically uh, concentrate on freehold. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is to ask for a copy of the title of the land or a subdivision plan. You then need to do a search. Before you start anything, uh, it's important to do a search. Uh, this, of course, assumes that you have already been to the place you've seen the land and you like it. Uh, once you do a search and what you should look for in a search is all the details that are on the title should match on the search. Uh, you should also be able to see in a search that it has no uh, a loan or any encumbrances or it has no court case. Uh, and it's a fairly easy document to read. The government uh, just approved uh, that you can now do a search without paying any money. Uh, we used to pay 500 shillings or 1,000 shillings depending on the area. It's now free to do a search. So I would urge everybody to do a search before they buy any property. Uh, the second thing is then get into an agreement. Uh, it is advisable to use a lawyer, a reputable lawyer. Uh, there are some lawyers who are not too reputable, but it's always advisable to look for a good lawyer. Don't worry about paying the legal fees. Uh, because this is a, uh, your investment, this is a saving, uh, this is your money that you're putting somewhere. So you don't cut corners and then regret, uh, regret, uh, regret uh, later. Uh, so the lawyer is able to look at the agreement if the, the, the vendor is the one doing the agreement or the lawyer's vendor is doing the agreement. He's able to tell you uh, what to look out for, what the clauses are saying and whether they are beneficial for you or not. I think the third thing then, if you are satisfied, is to go with a surveyor and confirm that uh, what you're being shown is exactly at that point. Uh, we know there are organizations or crooked people who will tell you the land is 200 meters from the road or from the tarmac road and uh, the actual land is three kilometers away. 
So it's very good to engage the services of a surveyor, registered surveyor, who can then confirm that what is you are actually being shown is what is on the map, is what is on the title, and is actually at that exact location. And you can easily do that now with uh, using technology, GPS technology, which will take you to the point. I think uh, after that, uh, you can then make your payment, uh, depending on the uh, depending on the terms that you have agreed. You can either pay a deposit and then pay the balance in 90 days or whatever terms that you have agreed upon. And thereafter, it's good to hold some money uh, pending transfer, and you can put the money with your lawyer and ask that uh, once the, the vendor has made the transfer into your name or into the, uh, to register the title in uh, whatever name that you want it into, then you can pay the balance through the lawyer. Um, so it's a fairly easy process. Uh, it's important to do a background check of the company that is selling you the land. Go to their uh, Facebook page, look at the comments that people are making, uh, watch some of the videos if they have any uploaded, uh, talk to a few people, um, ask them, you know, have you dealt with this company and what was, what was your experience? Uh, because we have also found that it's very easy for people to ask you to give them money, but it's very hard for them to keep uh, sometimes part of their, their end of the bargain. <music> Diaspora then becomes uh, just a little bit more complicated because um, you are not there to view the land yourself. So you kind of tend to rely on what you're being told. You might want to send a relative uh, to view or somebody that you trust to view the land. Sometimes it becomes difficult because uh, we've had cases where relatives actually uh, get into cahoots with the vendors and uh, they become brokers so they're not helping you. So it's very important to do a background check of the company and it's also even more important to use the services of, of professionals. So the lawyer is key, the surveyor is key, um, so that you are able to know that even when you are far away that those people can confirm uh, that the agreement is fine or that the land is at the exact position that uh, the vendor is claiming um, that it is. Um, because of that distance, but the, the process then should then take the normal, the normal way. Uh, it is important also to acknowledge that now with the technology, it's easy to send money. You can send M-Pesa even from diaspora. Um, you can all, of course use the Western Unions or you can do a direct transfer. Uh, there's also the challenge of signing forms because of distance, but I always advise uh, people in the diaspora do a physical signing of the forms and DHL them or courier them into the country uh, because you want your, your real signature to be on those forms and not uh, just people signing for you and then if there's a problem then you're not able to, 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 to do anything about it because it's not your signature. It's also important when you're in the diaspora to make sure that your la the, the land that you're buying is actually owned by the company that is selling. That the title reads the same name. So if it's AMG Realtors, it's not, I'm not showing you a title uh, of John Kamau or Peter Mwangi and claiming to be uh, s selling that land. It's important that you buy land from companies whose title has already changed ownership into, into, into the, the company's name. I think that's just an extra step to make sure that uh, uh, you are secure. Uh, what we do is we do a consumer research and uh, look at uh, where people want land. As AMG, we have been uh, in Nanyuki now for the last four years. Nanyuki is one of the best tourist destinations in this country. You have the great Mount Kenya facing you. You have very many conservancies. I count maybe about 16 con different conservancies in the area. It brings us joy to be able to offer the opportunity for people to own a piece of land in this exciting place. The process of buying land should be fairly straightforward and easy. There are a couple of things that you need to do as a buyer to ensure that you are secured and that you are buying genuine land. The number one thing I advise buyers to do is to do a, a, a simple research on the company that is offering to sell you the land. Number one, do they own the land or are they selling it on behalf of someone? And number two, and very importantly, get a lawyer when you're starting the process. It's important that if you're paying some money to a third party, 
that you have a lawyer involved. And number three, also get to view the land. Uh, it's important that you go and see what you're being sold. If you're buying a big piece, it's important to go with a surveyor who has a GPS that is able to identify that the actual place you're being offered is the actual place on the title. Have a look at the map of the area and try and make sure that you understand that where you are standing or where you're being offered this land is actually the same piece that is on the map. Uh, some people will sell you land that are saying they will, be, they will subdivide later, maybe they have not they subdivided it. You need to look at all those things. Look at the subdivision plan, make sure that it's approved.